At the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens, our vision is that the world should be led by global citizen leaders. These are leaders who care for people, for our planet, and for prosperity. And while current policymakers are slow to act, it is often the young people on the ground who bring the change. Climate change is real. Climate change is happening now. And those who contribute to it the least are hit the hardest, especially millions of smallholder farmers worldwide. Climate change further intensifies existing gender injustices in the farming community, such as access to land, finance, and education, increasing women's farmers' vulnerability. In times of rapid climate change, women smallholder farmers are facing multiple challenges. Yet, they are producing 70% of Africa's food, so they are crucial for the food security of a whole continent. This is why the Ban Ki-moon Center with the EVA campaign aims to elevate the voices of women in agriculture, particularly in Africa. This year, we are very proud to announce Ni Forti Prince Will Ghana and his organization Sustain Afrique as the 2023 EVA champion. Our champion is empowering widowed farmers in Cameroon. He provides trainings on climate resilient agriculture and specifically for snail farming. So Snail Freak, we're just young, uh, young guys from an university. Most of us grew up in a cocoa family, um, areas where they produce cocoa and saw how our mothers were suffering. One person did plant health management, I did crop production, another guy did livestock, and we said, okay, what can we do with our skills? We said the best way we can use our skills is to be able to go back to the same community we left in poverty to be able to help them. That's how it came about, just young people who were passionate to change their community. Since I discovered them, they are here with me, telling me do like this, do like that. So I am so happy with Sustain Africa. They taught me very well. Because if not, how will I even know that I can raise this, I can have money? Snail farming is a, is a secular, like a secular economy where you can use the shell, the, the feces, you can use the slime and everything. And then you can use buckets and things around. It's a sustainable way in which they now do farming and can be able to make money. We've trained so far 350 women um, in the subdivision of Tico, Tico subdivision in Cameroon, on sustainable snail farming. At first, people never believed that snails can, actually the eggs can hatch at home. So when people saw what I was doing, they were really amazed and excited and said, wow, so we can keep snails at home. The women are doing so much, they already have their small, small farms, and some of them are already selling, and it's, it's, it's helping them in so many ways. are very ready and they're very willing to do snail farming because it's cheaper to manage rather than uh, doing poetry or piggery. It's not a wasted business because snails don't die like fowl. No, you don't need so much. You can start with just tires, so you can go to the road and pick tires. And then you buy like maybe two, three snails. With a single snail, like I said, you can get over 300 snails in a year because snails are prolific breeders. Everything in the snail is beneficial. The shell, it's important. We use the shell for calcium. So when we remove the snail, this is a snail, this shell, we grind the shell to add as supplements to feed, animal feed. We have the slime, which is used for cosmetic purpose. If we extract the slime, you can you use it and then you go up on your face and you look even more beautiful. And then we have now the, 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 the meat. This, this, this is the snail inside the meat, which we can then remove and then we do what we do. We package and sell. People consume this and it's a delicacy, it's so nice. What we realize is that snails are good for those who have cardiovascular diseases, those who have issues with high blood and the worst. The physique of the snail is the best organic manure you can find so you can use that to grow your crops so everything about the snow is important you're not just cleaning your environment but everything is being used the landlords now they are renting the farm very expensive a piece of land we used to rent at five thousand for one year is ten thousand now and at times you go and hire a farm you plant maize you know that the other season is coming you will plant a granite they will say no your five thousand is finished 
you have a farm, you burn down everything, and then when rain falls, it washes away the topsoil, and some of those areas will easily flood. And then you find out that these women now will have to go and look for somewhere else to farm, and these areas will be a bit further from civilization, from the, the, the villages, so they have to spend more in transportation. And we know, we don't have farm to market goods. They are almost absent in Africa. So imagine them carrying a bag of cassava on their head in these far distant farms to come and sell. First of all, these farmers are smallholder farmers, which means they have limited resources. And then again, you have drought, drought on top, limited resources. How do they irrigate their farms? So you find out that the only time they can farm is during the rainy season. And during the rainy season, food is cheap. Everything is cheap in the market. Food is not only cheap, but they are exploited by the middlemen. So this is why farmers remain poor. So climate change will only worsen the whole situation because farmers will not have money to irrigate their farms. They won't have money to, 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 to buy new lands and all of that, especially even for the women. It's even worse for the women. What is going on in the society can make a, a widow have a psychological trauma by thinking all what she has gone through, the hands of the in-laws, family and some of them they are not opportune to be supported by the family give the phone give this one that all that thing they better be still stand up i give them all they tell me say and for all the women they be married and i one of the different tribe farm way mama survive for me for bamsi they don't say nearly all most of them don't have lands they don't have land lands to farm because of the uh, traditions and inheritance law and land tenure and all of these different things that affected them. If you don't have a husband, then you're, you're left with nothing. My man died with me in the seventh year. For our tradition, we say, where are master died, you go marry a brother, a dinan. And they was in that trouble, kind, kind trouble, me, told me. So I suffer with them. So they, that time we also hold this meeting for you. So they tell we say, no, where you be with you? No thing say you don't die, you don't do this. Women and youth are underrepresented in decision-making processes and political institutions. Yet, it is the youth who will bear the costs of climate change in the future, and women in the Global South already suffer disproportionately from its effects. If I could wish, I would say that we should provide an enabling environment for these women. Because I know farming is profitable, everybody knows about it. But why are African farmers the poorest in the world? Why are they suffering? Because they lack the enabling environment, the land issue. They don't have the resources. We have climate change. We don't have, they have, they don't have farm to market wood. So if we can do the hard things for these people, they can help us in producing this food. It will be like a dream come true to me. Five years from now, we're going to have a bigger team. We're going to have more people who will be committed to the cause. We're going to have uh, more work that we've done in our community because our goal is to empower um, at least 5,000 women in, in five years' time. Things are going to be bigger. We're going to have a bigger team, more impact in our community, more projects. I'm, I'm sure we're going to have a more happy community too. One snail at a time. Ruma, ruma.